Welcome to the Yanagita Podcast Show, episode 31. Guys, I got special guests today. We got Pukalani Super Rat founder. We got Eric and his daughter. We got Megan. And Megan is the brand manager. And so, funny story is that's how we connected. Because I saw you guys supporting so many different things in the community. Uh, and the most recent one, I think, was the Alzheimer's. Uh, yeah. We the Alzheimer's in, Law. Yeah. yeah. And then I know we're talking off camera, but was there like a connection to Alzheimer's? Is that how you guys started supporting? Or uh, that's great because we were doing the yeah, same thing. Yeah, we have a really strong connection with Alzheimer's. Dad, you want to talk about it? Or? Oh, okay. Uh, Alzheimer's, basically, yeah. my mom, Grandma Sue, uh, Sumiko, oh, okay. had Alzheimer's. Uh, her brother, Tomoharu, and we were just talking about it, uh, Tomoharu had uh, Alzheimer's. Mm. And I believe there's a one more member that on that side of the family, Tanizaki side, also has Alzheimer's or oh, maybe dementia. Wow. But yeah, it seems to run on that <coughs> side. So I don't know if it's my turn. Please, no. <laughs> <laughs> I could be in my dementia mode right now talking to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, but man. that's a, it's a family thing right now. Family thing. Yeah. Wow. So. How long, uh, how many years have you guys been supporting it uh, on Maui? Um, we just started last year. Oh, okay. Officially. Okay. I th- officially. I'm not sure before that if we were, we might have just donated gift certificates, but last year mm-hmm. we kind of took a more active participation role in it. And we could, it. we've never walked in it, and we uh-huh. really wanted to this year, and we couldn't because right. of COVID, right? Right. Yeah. So we went walking on our, our own. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I it, saw your thing. You you guys did the whole like running laps around the <laughs> building or something, right? It was incredible. And that's really <laughs> thanks to the team because they created like these little social distancing groups mm-hmm. where we could only have up to, we had 91 people walking, wow. but we could only release them nine or 10 at a time. Okay. So we had little groups of nine and 10 and yeah. then they would all wear their masks and walk. And we would walk all the way from the gym, uh, 800 Eha Street, all the way up to the post office. Okay. And then they would walk back. And that was the two miles that we would typically do around the Keo Pulani for okay. the regular walk. So, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and it was just incredible because uh, after that, there was some other stuff that you guys do, like behind the scenes too, with different uh, nonprofits and stuff like that. And it's just so crazy because this is what <laughs> I wanted to mention. The Pukulani Superette. Pukalani Super Rat. <laughs> the, and like, it's just so great. It's should ingrained. Give, we should give him a prize. <laughs> give me a prize, yeah. Like, I, like, I, that's ingrained in my brain. The song. It's like, wow. Second verse. Second verse? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, how does it go? How does it go? Uh, I'm not Hold singing it. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, I have dementia for you. You can do it. <laughs> Maybe that'll be a contest next year. We'll see who can sing it the best. See who can okay. sing it the best? Oh, dang. That'd be interesting. Like, Wait, what is the second verse? Talent. Talent. Yeah. The second verse for people listening. What is the second verse? Pokemon is super rare. What was it? Welcome to our country. Welcome to our one. country. Do we have a second verse? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote it down once. You wrote it down <laughs> once. <laughs> Dementia. <Sorry>. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Uh, so we're curious, like, how did this whole thing start? Like, Pokemon is super rare for people, you know, curious and wondering, like, how did this whole thing start? Uh, well, uh, I guess it goes back to my grandparents. Grandparents? Uh, what you call it? Um, Takio and Kome Tanizaki. Uh-huh. Uh, back in the 20s, 1920s, there was a, I believe this is, this is what I was told, that there was a market in Wailuku. There are many markets in those days, mm-hmm. all over, Paia, mm-hmm. you know, all over. Even like a lot of uh, older stores in, in Haiku, we don't know the names really, but there are many. Mm-hmm. And if you look at, if sometimes you drive on certain roads, you'd see in the back of the, um, say, right next to the roadside, there'd be a, a building, but you know it's a storefront. It mm-hmm. has glass windows, it has an entry, it has another glass window, you know. So at one time there was a business. Huh. In Haiku. Haiku. Yes. But um, back in the 20s, uh, Takeo and Kome uh, Tanizaki, they started a store in Wailuku. Mm. Uh, more like a fruit stand. That's oh, okay. how most people start. Yeah, what part of Wailuku is this? this is I don't uh, know if it was right in uh, Market Street. So I'm oh, not Market sure. Street. Okay. I never confirmed it. Oh. But somewhere in that area where there are many, uh, uh, many stores. Uh, and there, at one time, there was... Uh, fire a fire 
and I, I believe Wailuku had several fires, as did Honolulu, as did Big Island. There's a lot of wooden structures, and it just goes from building to building to building. Back to back. Till yeah. they put the fire out, <coughs> finally. Mm -hmm. you know? So, one time they burned, and uh, grandparents' uh, store was one of them. Oh. I don't think it was very large. Yeah. But then uh, I guess a friend of theirs uh, offered a uh, uh, property in Bukalani. Bukalani. And I guess they decided to move up. And that's where they built the first, uh, the Tanizaki store. The Tanizaki, okay. This is like in the, ninth, this would be a, according to a photo, I, I believe it was taken in 1925. Oh. So it was there for, it was, it was there for, years. because the way the, uh, oh. the signage was sort of uh, worn out, weather, uh -huh. weathered. Uh, that I think they were there for a couple of years before that. Mm -hmm. So again, when was this fire? Wow. I, I really can't place it. Wow. And I asked the Maui News and they said they would have to go back to the archives or something. Wow, to find that. And it's, it's uh, yeah, it's like archival stuff is hard to, be, hard to get. Yeah. But anyway, uh, <coughs> so uh, they started mm -hmm. the store in Pukulani. Pukulani. And there was a gas station. Oh, okay. The old gas station with the pump in front of it, and pump there's a fine. picture. I think one of one of several books because mm -hmm. we gave them the black and whites, made copies, and mm -hmm. they put it in. Uh, uh, the old way, the first one was with a picture of my grandparents holding up, say, uh, my mom, mm -hmm. my uncle, mm -hmm. the oldest brother Shigeo, and. Uh, was it Sadami too? Mm. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But there was a picture of them standing in front, like yeah. on the, like the lanai. Like a, yeah. And uh, it's a gas station. There's no covering over it. Huh. But you can see a pump that says crown. Crown. Crown, right? In a vertically uh, a tank. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom of the tank is a, looks like a rubber hose, a thick rubber hose. Oh. And it's hung up on the hook. Yeah. I think it has a rag in it. So that's why they used to dispense fuel in those days. <laughs> or Model A's, I guess. Wow. Know. I don't know what kind of cars. But the thing is, uh, yeah. In other photos, you might see also along the old Halekla Highway. Uh -huh. Halekla right across Highway. the street, uh, adjacent to the station, uh -huh. Halekla Highway. It was really located on the corner of uh, Halekla Highway and uh, Makwa Avenue. Yeah. Okay, Makwa on that corner. Uh -huh. In the background, you can see that there was a like wire fence. Oh. So there must have been either cattle or, cattle or something, some kind yeah. of animals, you know, yeah. cows, you yeah. Know, Good fence. Uh, horses. Huh. And it was a dirt road. It wasn't paved. Yeah. So it goes back then. Oh. So there's some history in the back there, you know. Wow. Like, where the Baptist church is now. Yeah. And uh, Mr. O'Shiro's house on the corner. Uh huh. This thing will be a. Uh, what was that for that? Uh, oh. Anyway, it used to be uh, another business over there, uh -huh. and there was a pineapple field across the street, like across the street from the store towards mm -hmm. the mountain. Mm -hmm. It seemed to be always be there. Wow. Charlie Maxwell one time told me that there are a lot of uh, Hawaiian uh, activity in the area because exactly. there was a gulch of water. Right. Right. There's a big gulch. Yeah. And off to the sides would be you find where these uh, where people would make their homes or villages oh. or family you know villages and stuff. Mm -hmm. So there'd be uh, burials hmm. all over the place. All over the place, yeah. <coughs> so what's under the pineapple field? What's underneath our store? What's uh, underneath the road? Yeah, we don't know. Oh. Going back to time. Yeah. You know? But yeah, wow. little little history of that place, as far as I know. And there was cornmeal camp. What was it called? Uh, Cornmill Camp, uh, up camp. the street. Up the street. Yeah. More more down towards Makawao, about a, less than a quarter of a mile. Mm -hmm. In the mountainside, that was called Cornmill Camp, where the mm. fire station is located now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where the fire station is. Yes. Oh. Uh, big camp, a lot oh. of houses. Yeah. The uh, uh, Maui, Pine, uh, Maui Pine Company used it for, I guess, the base. Yeah. To pick up workers, maybe Got to it. go to work. Mm -hmm. Just like the uh, Itzianis, we have the villages all around the place. That's right. Like the little <coughs> um, towns. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
Yeah, that's how it oh. was in the old days, I guess. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. Do you remember like what Pokemon Super Red originally started selling? Back then, like was it like sushi, bento, like back in those days? Do you remember? Yeah, my grandmother had yeah, a, yeah. Uh, I believe that she had a uh, Simon stand. Oh, Simon? Yeah, oh. Simon. And there was very few pe- places in up country. Wow. As if for maybe Makwal town itself. Yeah. At the time, that was established. <coughs> mm-hmm. But then, uh, uh, yeah, so she'd be selling sushi and Simon. Uh-huh. And that continued. And later she moved towards the back of the, she gave that up and moved to the back. Mm-hmm. Of the uh, the service station, uh-huh. which you know I could I'm not mistaken if I'm not mistaken it was maybe where they used to live too. Oh, <coughs> right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I know that one time I went inside and uh, they'd be like shelving mm. or like groceries, mm-hmm. and canned goods and stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, in the back of that would be the kitchen. There's a wall mm-hmm. kitchen. And there's a service station part where Monko, Monko Tom would be selling, this is more like in the 50s, after oh. he came back from the war. Okay. Uh, he'd be selling like fishing supplies mm-hmm. and stuff, and you know, oil, mm. and brake fluid and stuff. And uh, in the back of that was another room, uh, and that one was, that became a barbershop. Barbershop? It was that? a barbershop. Oh. Uh, was it smoky? Kalimon? Uh-huh. Go ahead, nicknames. Oh. Cool, cool. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh-huh. like, there are, like, I'm saying, they'll be more like your age now. Right. How long were they there, the barbershop? I think it must have been there for at least, I, I'm not sure, but maybe yeah. 10 years. 10 years. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what happened to him. I think he, maybe he's gone already, but oh. guys like Frankie uh-huh. be there. Interesting. Yeah, and that's where I learned a lot about the Korean War. Korean War? Yeah, because... Uh, uncle. Uncle, and you know, I guess some of the guys are veterans too, right? From Got the Korean it. War. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Like, you know, they missed their friends and stuff, mm-hmm. but then um, he had this book mm-hmm. that all veterans have mm-hmm. on their, uh, their their division, their battalion or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And I believe it was 1st Cavalry. Mm-hmm. Cause there was a dog and something else and a hmm. yellow thing hmm. but anyway uh, uh, I think a dog or a horse dog or horse <laughs> but anyway uh, yeah. it was big and black and mm-hmm. had pictures had his picture inside too mm. I guess as uh, platoon or companies right so they had pictures oh. be interesting you know wow. I'm pretty sure if you go to the Korean War Association, uh-huh. they have all, all the different divisions and stuff. Mm. Pretty cool. That's incredible. I know we're talking off camera too about <laughs> all kind of different stuff too. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, now, this is just amazing because what has changed the most, would you say, since the, like, the last like 30 or so years? Since the last 30 years? Last 30 years. What has changed the most since like the 80s and 90s to now? If you say business wise, yeah. Uh, if you look at the uh, other mom and pop stores mm-hmm. that are either still here or they might be gone already, would be the, uh, I guess, would be the introduction of the big box stores. Mm. Think mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's really. Right. In other words, <coughs> If you had a fitness place, right, and you're old time, mm-hmm. and you had your following and stuff, mm-hmm. and in came twenty four hour fitness, uh-huh. Planet Fitness. Uh huh. Now, what does Planet Fitness, uh, the relationship with uh, twenty four hour fitness? In other words, what would be the change when Planet Fitness came in? Wow. After twenty four hour fitness, been there for like twenty years. Yeah. That must have been a big footprint, huh? Yeah. Huge. So you can imagine uh, what would it be like for, oh. from the beginning, mom and pop stores were here for like, you could say for 60, 80 years. Wow. And all of a sudden, there's Costco. Yeah. I mean, not that Costco is a bad <coughs> company. No, none mm-hmm. of these companies are bad. Mm-hmm. You know, if anything, the, you can say whatever you want, you know, but mm-hmm. uh, uh, you can say that, oh yeah, but it, doesn't it lift your level of competition? 
Sure it does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, we were here before Safeway. We were here That's before crazy. Foodland. 1920s. I mean, you, you want to go back how far you want to go back? I yeah. guess somebody was there before. I mean, Foodland was there before Safeway. Uh huh. You know? Foodland, yeah. You know? How many you want to see the progression oh. of business on, in, on Maui? That's crazy. You, know, you can study that. And wow. this, someone should write a paper on it. I think somebody probably did. Yeah. I but imagine. this would be like a model of oh, yeah. all of years. competition. It's an island. Yeah. And you saw development of this. Oh. And this. Different tiers of oh. development. What about construction? Oh, yeah. What about construction material? There was A and B, lumber and supply. That's right. And <laughs> all of a sudden, here's Home Depot. Yeah. Ah. That's right. You know, I, I think there was Lowe's and Home Depot almost at the same time. I'm not sure. Something mm. like that. But what did that do to A and B and yeah. lumber and supply? And oh. the other stores. Yeah, the other stores just... You know, it's wow. progression of business, you know. Oh. You got to live with it. Yeah. You can't stop it. It's called progress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Progression. But the thing is... That's incredible. So, yeah, speaking about that, because that's so true, there's a lot of smaller mom and pop shops, even gyms, bunch of gyms and stores that have been shut down over the last 30 years. <laughs> what do you guys think that you guys have been doing to kind of keep going till today, in 2020? I guess uh, it's based on I gotta be customer service. Customer service. Uh, answering the call of the customers, paying mm-hmm. attention to maybe what it does. And you know, I can't say I'm the only eyes or I'm the only person with the answers. Mm-hmm. It came from our crew. Mm. The crew that was there at that time when I came, there must have been about six people. Six people. And myself, seven. Mm-hmm. You know. But the thing is, uh, the ladies that were working, they're basically ladies. Mm. They're working for my mom. Mm-hmm. And they paid attention to what Miss so-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so said. Mm. And what uh, Mrs. So-and-so said. And they said, yeah, we should maybe bring in more different kinds of needles for sewing. Mm. You know, something as simple as that. And that carries on from that to beer, to cigarettes, to oh, wow. corned beef, to canned spaghetti hose wow. you know yeah. and what kind of lettuce you want to see wow. oh, always get green leaf lettuce yeah but the customers are asking what about red leaf oh so you bring in red leaf right in red that, leaf. that kind of takes off mm-hmm. and that you know uh, goes through the community oh hey do you carry green leaf <coughs> red leaf manoa butter mm-hmm. all butter. that yeah. oh okay and then here comes somebody and says well, what about do you carry kale Huh. What? Kale. <laughs> uh, no, we'll kale. check it out. And all of a sudden, it becomes another thing. Huh. So the produce section expands. Wow. The responsibilities get bigger. Yeah. Because you have to remember who brought you the kale. Uh-huh. What is the telephone number? Right. And how much do you order a week? Huh. A day. <coughs> a month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the person has to kind of be on it. You, mm-hmm. know? you can't just order a truckload mm-hmm. and sell one case right you know you're gonna eat it yeah so that's always been the case you know and me i always depended on my crew wow. really i can't remember all that wow. and how many people are in the crew now so 75 75 yeah, so it's wow. a perspective right oh. <laughs> uh, it grows all the time wow. that you know that you can't do the whole job yeah. yourself you're dependent on the people that you hire right and some of them maybe you know they don't realize this you know, mm-hmm. but they are important yeah and i don't know it works mm-hmm. out somehow mm-hmm. i love that man the importance of like the the team and the crew and listening to the people that come and the community and yeah oh my gosh and I, i'm just curious how, has covid how has covid kind of like affected you guys in the last nine months or so oh man i mean it has been crazy keeping up with those rules you know the ones right. that change all the time oh, I, i'm changing. sure you you've been doing it yeah too, right fitness centers too yeah yeah, yeah. um but you know <clears throat> it 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 has sucked a little bit but mm-hmm. you know we're thankful that our customers keep coming back try and make it as safe as possible for our employees and our customers so 
um, they feel comfortable and we feel comfortable and we're going to just ride 2020 out and we'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You know, and speaking about that, Megan, like, tell us about what you're doing on social media. Well, the brand <laughs> what manager. What am I doing? I'm not doing anything. No, it's great because. No, no it's me. <laughs> you know, it's, now the now cat's you. out of the bag. Yeah, Megan. Ah, boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, funny yeah. thing, I didn't have a Facebook. I turned uh-huh. mine off for like 10 years. So mm-hmm. when I came to Going Super at two years ago, I was like, I'll try, but I don't remember how to very well Mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to Instagram either Mm -hmm. so I just kind of went with it you just went with it yeah you know you you just talk to the people like they're your friends yeah yeah you connect very so like social (laughs) very social social media yes that's great because that's one thing that um, I remember you were doing you were just always kind of commenting on our stuff yeah (laughs) and like hey is that so and so (laughs) or hi that actually looks really good yeah and I was like Pukalai super red oh weird right that a store would just talk <laughs> <laughs> they would actually talk and that's what i think it is what you were saying it's like that real like human part of it that when people keep seeing that and hearing that it's like oh wow let's go up there yeah so uh, yeah, we have all uh, we have good managers good managers yeah. great managers mm-hmm. and uh great staff great mm-hmm. crew uh who's been there well, barbara's been there like forever yeah like, she's been there she's the OG one of the yeah. OGs yeah we got yeah. a few aunties out there that have nice. been there for yeah. a long time Barbara wow. Irene yeah and Irene just celebrated her 50th anniversary with us 50th yeah. anniversary imagine that like I'm curious like <laughs> what, what, what do you guys do because that's a long time to be at one place we haven't done anything yet I mean we did air it all over the radio so yeah. the whole Shout island out. what, what, what is your name 50 year anniversary uh auntie irene Ag- irene yeah. aguilar got it irene aguilar boom yeah. shout out and, uh, <laughs> the lady uh well a couple of ladies that were there before her and mm-hmm. still working yeah. so. patty losi yeah mm. patty she's the cashier mm-hmm. very important mm-hmm. uh barbara silva mm-hmm. who runs our back area for uh packaging and stuff oh. been doing it for years and she does a great job but she's been there longer than any of them oh. so you, you, Irene was 50 years oh. I, be, I, I think Barbara may be closer to 60 60 yeah. got it legend yeah. Yeah. yeah she's seen a lot she's seen the again oh. the progression of the store uh-huh. she was there and my grandmother was still around assuming wow. when my mother was still running the store mm. And uh, yeah, she's seen some history of the yeah. store too. All of them, actually. Yeah, that's incredible. And that's incredible because mm-hmm. for the mom, because I, I always hear this from other mom and pop shop owners, is for it to go down to from the grandparents to the mom, I mean, to the third generation now, mm-hmm. what are some of like the values and stuff like that that they would instill? Because it's a reflection of like typically they'll, people always tell us it's always a reflection of the, the leader the you know and and so your grandparents or your, your parents must have you know instilled certain things into into you guys and people are probably curious like what are those things to keep going forward probably a common one that you hear a lot is customers come first mm. mm-hmm. if you're talking to an employee mm-hmm. and a com- uh, customer interjects you speaking with the customer, not the employee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're gonna make time and space for them to to air out things, mm-hmm. to put in a request or whatever. You're gonna listen to it, mm-hmm. write it down or whatever you need to remember. Mm-hmm. Then you might get back to the employee again. Mm-hmm. But customers first. Customers first. You know. uh, it's, it's like a golden rule, right? Yeah. I mean, from a jewelry store, clothing store, to a grocery store, much less a gas station. Yeah. Customers first. Wow. If you don't got that, there wouldn't be a Burger King around. There wouldn't be a McDonald's around. Yeah, McDonald's? That's true. Yeah. That's one of their creeds. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's how true. they became great. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's common ground. I mean, it's a common basic rule tenant and business. Mm-hmm. Customer comes first. Mm-hmm. When you stop thinking of that, your business will dry up. Mm. and blow away mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. and I, I'm I've been watching Megan uh, and she basically instills it too because 
we're all customers of another store, right? Mm. I, mean, I go to Burger King or McDonald's or mm -hmm. I go to Costco's or I go to yep. uh, the gas station mm -hmm. and I expect certain things. Mm -hmm. yeah, just decent things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see Megan, she's she has it. Right? I mean, she, you know, she realizes that. I, I pity those that don't realize it and say, I rule, mm. the customers do what I say. Mm. No, 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 no. It don't work that way. Yeah. yeah. She understands. That's awesome. And by the way, she's not also brand, are you still brand manager? I'm official. I'm still everything. Oh, um, everything. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Everything. Well, she just recently got promoted to uh, president. Mm -hmm. Oh dang! Oh, <laughs> so my bad. No, no, You're gonna no, correct no. me. But that's under her badge. Under the radar. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so so she'll be the uh, fourth fourth wow. generation. Yeah. Fourth generation. Fourth generation. Yeah. My uh, okay. my brother Miles. Uh, yes. His uh, his kids are working at the store too. Oh okay okay. I think one is in college right now, and then uh, Michelle, she's still there. She's oh. working like that. Yeah. So it's really family. Yeah, yeah. family. Yeah. And I would assume uh, like a lot of the, the people and the customers that come in are probably like that kind of family mm -hmm. vibe, right? Oh, See so yeah. the same faces, some of the, you know, all the local people of the mm -hmm. country just coming in and pick up the same foods. And, and you know, they talk story. Talk story, and yeah. It's basically a talk story, and I know there's <laughs> been... I know in the, just in the parking lot, it has history. Huh. That telephone that was on the side of the wall that uh -huh. we have a painting of uh -huh. right now, it's a pretty authentic, I mean. I know, right? Yeah, realistic yeah. painting huh. of the telephone booth. There's been so many, I guess, uh, business transactions <laughs> of all kinds. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. I know, certainly for real estate, mm -hmm. I see many of them. Huh. You know, with the, uh, the TNK map, Mm. on the hood <laughs> and these guys are crowded around them and they're, you know, they're pointing at the mountain <laughs> and something. you know that something's, something's happening, happening in that, that parking lot you know and uh, much less uh, uh, yeah I know there's been a lot of businesses mm. uh, I think there was one thing about uh, a chef who was talking to another chef and they was eating uh, something on the hood of their car from the store and, you know yeah. they're well known chefs I mean, they're, you know, <coughs> yeah. so all kinds of people pass all through. All kinds of people. Really? That's amazing. <coughs> and so, like, I'm, 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 I'm sure there's, like, hundreds and lots of customers that's come in. And, like, who would you say has been, like, a customer that's, like, touched and changed, and maybe, like, touched you guys' hearts over the years? And I'm sure there's a lot. I'm sure there's plenty. But maybe, like, the first one or two that kind of pop up in your hearts or minds. So many. So many, yeah. yeah. I mean, some of them go to the same church as us. Oh, okay. And uh, there's been so many. They're not around anymore. Uh -huh. you know. And certainly, I hardly know their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. you know about uh, Thompson Tone mm -hmm. Ah, Once we did a testimony on radio, and this person's name was. Uh, this customer's name was really great customer, mm -hmm. Teddy Govea, mm -hmm. and he made a testimony on oh, talk about local. Yeah, you know, uh -huh. there's another one. Uh, she, I think she made a testimony too. I think uh, Mrs. Cavallo. Mrs. Uh, Cavallo. Yeah, I think she just recently just passed away. Uh -huh. uh, my condolences to the family uh, and to Teddy's family too. There's been so many. Mm. You're yeah. gonna you're gonna get to know the names of certain ones too that you're gonna remember over the years, you know. But well, well, now it's like I I'm working in the store and people come up and they've aged, you uh -huh. know, like my friend's parents or mm. like an old teacher from like <coughs> elementary school. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, hello, oh, hi. <laughs> like, oh. <Wow. laughs> yeah. I mean, way back, they go way back. Wow. They knew my grandparents. That's know. incredible. Thinking about that. I mean, they used to shop in the store and say, you know, I remember your grandma. Oh. And they're older than me. That's incredible. And they they remember my grandma. They certainly remember my mom, mm -hmm. Sue. You know, mm -hmm. always. Oh. 
then you see people that know my dad you know? Mm. my dad worked at Kahului Railroad previous to that he was working for uh, no previous to that I think he was in the army mm. but he came back worked for the railroad because he was a, a mechanic mm -hmm. a diesel mechanic mm -hmm. so he did the diesel electric locomotives mm -hmm. from there they made the switch to Kahului Trucking mm -hmm. It was simple for him to just go into trucking, you know, to take over trucking too. Yeah. But he retired from there and he went to the, uh, what's the Young Brothers uh, tugboat uh -huh. in the harbor? Uh -huh. The Joseph Ray, the Captain Billings, Chuck Billings. Oh, and there's people that know him and say, wow, I think there's a Mr. Safri, a Captain Safri. Captain Safri. Cool guy. But they all know each other and it's like that goes way back and yeah. diff between different companies, yeah, different duties. Yeah. Wow. I mean it's different. It's That's like you you meeting somebody that knew your dad. Right. Or your mom, it's like, Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> it's like, Oh, how's yeah. it going? Yeah. Yeah. How's it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Small world. Yeah, know? it's crazy. I mean people are probably curious too, like, what is one thing? But if, if people are listening to you guys talk for the first time, what is something that you would want the people in our community to, to know about you guys? Let's start with Megan. Oh, oh man. Yeah, what would you want people to know about you, Megan? Personally or about the store? Oh, about both. We'll do both. Well, they can go first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have Dad go first. Yeah, we'll just okay. Go. What would you want? Uh, not to gain any business, but uh, just mm -hmm. a simple thought of uh, really be a good neighbor. Mm. Be a good neighbor. Be a good uh, friend. Mm -hmm. Don't lose touch. Mm -hmm. I, I over the years I've kind of lost touch with. Even in recent years, lost touch with a lot of people. Mm. And just the way I did things, I guess. Mm -hmm. Don't mean any harm. Yeah. Uh, that's the way things happen, but I'd say be a good neighbor, be honest, yeah. and uh, keep that ball rolling, man. Yeah. Just keep that ball rolling. Keep that ball rolling. Yeah, that's what I tell everybody. I did, I did tell them, it's another day. Yeah. But just keep that ball rolling. Because mm -hmm. you know what? <laughs> that's life. You wake up. If you wake up, mm. you wake up and it's another brand new day. History. Mm -hmm. In the future I pass, the past mm. is past, mm -hmm. the future is only coming in the next breath. Mm. So be a good neighbor and uh, it solves a lot of problems. Yeah, I love that. Be a good neighbor and keep in touch. It's kind of Buddhist in a way. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. What about something personal? Like, 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 like hobbies or like beach guy or outdoor or something that people are like oh that they don't know about you oh yeah. well a lot of people that we talked to all my friends and yeah. they probably know like my beach thing kind of stopped when i saw my first big shark at oh. <laughs> wait where was this big shark out, out towards the intercom oh. you know outside just outside yeah where they had the big uh, beach lights at night ah you know on the shore yeah we passed that swim past that and that's where I saw my first real big one that's my last one <laughs> how big was it yeah it's bigger longer than a pickup truck oh pickup truck would fit in this room right yeah, yeah it's longer than that oh my gosh and that's I, crazy. I saw the ugly green stripes of a tiger it was oh, a tiger the tiger shark I didn't know they grew that big until you pass it in front with Daryl Allen Light. Oh my <laughs> goodness. You, know, yeah. you can't see it's uh, no, you can't it's see. not a visual visual distortion because of water. Yeah. It's right in front of you. Oh. Just gliding past through your light. Just curious. It doesn't splash or wiggle or nothing. Yeah. It just cuts right through like a submarine. That thing. is crazy. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. My friends uh were there I think it was Kirk and Eric. Mm -hmm. Another Eric. Yeah. I, all I know is I was doing a backstroke <laughs> with Back a cock graphite spear. <laughs> and Daryl Allen, like doing a back, you know, yeah. swimming backwards, passing them. 
And they said, what's wrong? I said, well, it's a big, big shock. Big, oh big shock. Gosh. You know, it's like, uh, not funny. It's like, no, that's crazy. I was kind of terrified. Because you know? after a while, you know, after it, it glided right through my light, mm -hmm. it swam out. And you don't know if it's coming back around. That's true. Or from underneath. Or straight on. So I was doing like a, you know, airport uh, tower thing, you know, the lights yeah. going back and forth, backstroking with a cocked oh graphite spear, churning all up, yeah. real <laughs> yeah, smart, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. First and last. Yeah, yeah and that's, my, that's my last time going night diving, actually. Wow. And that kind of like, kind of ended it for me. I thought yeah. like, something's telling you right now, <laughs> you don't belong in the water. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't be here. Dang. You should go to uh, you know Wakamatsu or something. Wakamatsu. Buy your fish. Buy your fish. Go buy your fish. Yeah, tatamiya. You know, it's always cool. Our fruits. Oh. I'll name them all. Oka, everything. Oka, okay, yeah. All our mom and pops. Buy your fish over there. Buy fish over there. Yeah, Wakamatsu gets Sakura Boshi. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout out. Good enough. Yeah. Good enough. Oh my god. Always good. That's crazy. That's the last time I went. Yeah, last time you went. Guys tell me that you know even with boats, mm -hmm. they see them out there past Kahalabi outside Kahalabi side. Oh. Or in the channel someplace where the boats are coming back. Yeah. And here comes a big one. Big like, one just. And it's not a whale shark. It's a big tiger like goes across the boat, tail on one side, continuing out the other side, the, the heads oh, on the other side. That's crazy. And like, they grow that big. Yeah. Huh? That's crazy. So why, the question is, why was a big one like that so far inland? Yeah. Was he hunting for turtles? Huh. Something that big. Yeah. The appetite wouldn't be for small fish, I would think it would be for bigger stuff, right? Yeah, you got big appetite. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that was my last time. That's the last time, oh my As God. far as a hobby, I think, yeah, yeah that's about it. Besides, right. maybe... Welding once in a while. Welding. You were a raw, a raw vegan for like a year. Oh, okay. raw vegan, yeah. <coughs> that's pretty interesting. Right? See, that's pretty cool. Yeah, shout yeah. out, shout out to Chef Ali Cat. <laughs> oh, chef Ali Cat, culinary chef, raw vegan chef. Wow. Culinary. She graduated from a school. Oh. Someplace in the mainland. Yeah. What was that like, raw vegan? Raw vegan yeah. means you eat nothing that is a hundred and five. Nothing can be cooked over a hundred and five degrees. And you eat nothing that have feet. Huh. And how long did you do that, the raw vegan diet? I did it for uh, for her program, uh -huh. which is to reverse diabetes. Oh, okay. And it was successful. It was for 30 days. 30 days. With a physical before it started, a physical when we end. Mm. That means a blood test and all, you know, testing and all. Wow. But in the first uh, four days, uh -huh. within the first four days, <coughs> I threw away my insulin, which I was using once wow. a day. And the syringes, days. threw them away. Oh. Uh, Simvastatin and the yeah, well, doctors don't want to hear that, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I threw all my pills. Wow. And all my, my readings on the end physical mm -hmm. showed that everything came back down to normal or a little bit below, oh. Espe especially the blood sugar. The blood sugar. Yeah. If you have diabetes and type 2, for those out there that have it, there is a way. Yeah. And it might not fit everybody, but let me tell you, how bad do you want it? Yeah. I didn't want to poke myself with a needle every morning right. and face that uh, 10 to 15 minutes of just cold sweat. Mm -hmm. Because when, if you put that needle in the wrong place, mm. it can be a usual place that you put it, Yeah. Uh, which is usually by the stomach, uh -huh. in a roll of fat, whatever you can find. Uh -huh. uh, it doesn't hurt. But sometimes it burns. Oh. And because I didn't go to the training because I was trying to rush it in the beginning, yeah. I did things that Rambo did. <laughs> oh, oh here in the park <laughs> Sylvester Stallone sticks that that uh was it a pen the pen cartridge or something, yeah. the epinephrine just, or I don't know. Yeah, just into his tie. Yeah. Why well, did that? Oh my God. <laughs> Let me tell you, you don't want to do that. <laughs> or your calf. Mm -hmm. Or in your arm, like you see in the TV, or on your mm -hmm. shoulder. On your shoulder. No. Oh. Uh, whoever does that has special, let me tell you, they're magical. Because oh. it don't hurt, right? When they do it, when you do it, 
I'm gonna try it in the form. Right, mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. uh, see me going. It's oh. gonna burn like somebody just lit a match and stuck it into your arm. Wow. So I didn't want to do that. That was my my motivation. Yeah. Uh, I hated it every wow. morning for one year. Insulin and the syringe. So for those with type two diabetes, there is a way. Yeah. And hopefully, <coughs> you can do it before uh, there's permanent damage. Mm -hmm. You know, the neuropathy in the, f the right. feet. Right. Yeah. So it's common with a lot of uh, people with diabetes. Yes. It, it and it's is. on the way to like really the circulation is so bad. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not circulating to your nerve, nerve and nerve fibers. Yes. Uh, circulation feeding it. Mm -hmm. They need oxygen too. I mean, red yeah, blood yeah. cells, right? Yep. Uh, the oh, tissues. Crazy. But the thing is, uh, yeah, there's a way. Mm -hmm. Chef Ali Cat. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Chef Ali Cat. She's yeah, originally we gotta, we gotta collaborate with her. You, you is should. She Maui? Yeah. She is. She is okay. now. Yeah, yeah. After we gotta. Originally from San Francisco. Her. Okay. She has a history. You can ask her about it. It's really interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's, like, you're gonna go, huh? Yeah. That's amazing because that's exactly what her whole premise of fighting sickness or fitness is. Yeah. Yeah. Lost 31 pounds in 31? 30 days. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> all my blood sugars, triglycerides? Yeah. Cholesterol? Oh. All came lumping down. Wow. Yeah. See, that yeah. is some good stuff. And the formula is yeah. kale, cucumber, and celery. Kale, cucumber, and celery. Juicing only. Ooh. No, no, no. Not eating it. Oh. Juicing. Juicing only. So you're juicing it every meal? Uh, you can juice it maybe, say, two days before. Got up it. to two days before. This after the decom decomposition, right? Starts. Right. Uh, but up until two days, that's what I was doing was making like five quarts of green juice, uh -huh. kale, cucumber, and celery. Uh -huh. And the thing is, it worked. The doctor knows this. Huh. I had to make a log too and poke my finger five times a day Yeah. for 30 days. Oh. <laughs> my fingers are all black dots. Oh my God. But the thing is, the results were, um, yeah, I didn't think it was possible. Oh. I heard stories. Yeah. But the thing is, this is my story. This is like it actually happened. Yeah. And you might you might relate that to your people that fit this. They are they are type two. I guarantee mm -hmm. you, there's gonna be somebody in there. Mm -hmm. Well, they know somebody. Guarantee that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you try raw vegan, mm -hmm. uh, being a raw vegan, uh, it's pretty amazing. Mm. You know what is weird? Mm -hmm. <coughs> For vegan and raw vegan, it's a culture. Mm. I didn't know this. Mm. When you go to the market and you you, you meet people, you know, the, um, the, um, what was it, the, the vegetable market at Long's Drugs right. or someplace downtown, mm -hmm. you meet people, you talk to people, and they're in the same boat. They're oh. doing this because of some kind of uh, a way to control their, their problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether it be weight loss or diabetes, you know, mm -hmm. but the thing is, it's a different culture now. Mm. I didn't know this, but you're all talking the same language. That's great. Isn't that isn't that like a requirement for culture? Maybe language. Yeah, absolutely. Definitions, you know. Uh, but the thing is, yeah, I think it's interesting. You know, I, I didn't know this. Wow. Yeah, raw vegan. Yeah. Raw, raw vegan. vegan means everything is raw, and wow. uh, Chef Alicat's motto is, "Go raw." Huh. Wow. And she could make anything. Huh. Remember, she's a chef. She's a chef, yeah. From main course, uh, appetizer, main course, to dessert. All mm. raw vegan. That's incredible. Okay, yeah, we gotta get her on the show, man, next time. Oh. Yeah, we gotta. She's gonna surprise reach you. Reach out and contact. Yeah. And, mm. Highly recommended. Yes. Yeah. So we'll put her name in the in the description. What was it one more time? Uh, chef Alicat. Alicat. A L I K A T. Okay. Uh, I think uh, she might have a site. I'm not sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Facebook. Check it out. I know she was in LinkedIn. Social mm -hmm. media. Yeah. Cool. Dang. <laughs> so, Megan. Uh -oh. Interesting fact. About... Let's start with yourself personally. I don't think yeah. anything is what would you say? fairly interesting about me. Like in favorite TV shows? Oh, your no. Friends I, I binge watch really horrible TV on Netflix all the time. <laughs> like, what's like, an example? Horrible, horrible. I can't even, I don't even know the names, usually it's like the reality shows that like melt your brain a little bit, <laughs> I will 
That is my guilty pleasure. Okay, okay. Korean, Korean, Korean dramas? Korean, Korean dramas. Korean dramas. I'll do Korean Yo, dramas. Yo, did you, well. what's the last, uh, gosh, did you watch the ART one? The, ART. it's like a virtual reality one where it puts a lens in his eye? No, I did not. What about uh, Itaewon? The no, restaurant one? I, the, oh, wow. The last yeah. one. Itaewon class. Not. Itaewon class, yeah. I have not seen that one. You watched that one? Crash landing on you? Crash landing on you. I was going you. to watch hey. it, oh. and then I got busy and I didn't want to read subtitles. I just started like watching that. Crash Landing. Dang. Is it good? It's pretty good. Okay. Cause I like action ones too. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Okay, Korean <laughs> drama. Dang. What yeah. about for like Megan at work, Megan? Um, you know, I don't. Something interesting about me. I don't really have. I made up my job titles. Okay. I didn't have a job when I started the store. Uh -huh. How long ago was that? Um, two years ago. Uh -huh. I didn't know where I fit in, uh -huh. so I gave myself the title brand manager and I took over social media for fun. Oh, okay. And, yeah, um, so, yeah, I just kind of, in the, like my brother said, mm -hmm. I am just kind of like that really annoying blinky light <laughs> <laughs> that reminds people oh <laughs> about gosh. Google and Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> And so, where's your brother at? Um, he he works at the store too. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he is awesome. the safety and security compliance officer. Oh. So he is in charge of like you know the big things. Like yeah. he helped form a lot of the policies during COVID to Got make sure it. you know we were all compliant and everyone was safe. And so. so everyone's like smart in their own little <laughs> niche. Yeah. Yeah, safety, procedures, yeah. food distribution, yeah. all that stuff. That's Jason awesome. Jason could probably walk in this room. And maybe at least 15 things wrong with it. <laughs> I mean, That's his name, Jason. Yeah. Jason. Jason. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to him. How long has he been at uh, oh, Pokemon? Um, yeah, a couple years before you, right? Yeah, maybe six. Six years yeah. already. Yeah. Wow. But he, he was doing, uh, basically, before that he was ordering beer. Beer. Uh, liquor. Oh, He's okay. Charge of liquor, like. the liquor. Yeah. There's another lady named Karis. She's also in charge of wines. Uh huh. Karis, Chris and Rocky. Yeah. And you said there's 75 people? Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. Like, what, what, what would you guys say is like three things that come to mind? Maybe like just a word or phrase that, I know you're saying family and keep in touch, to keep the team together. Because that's a bunch of people for a long time too. Oh. Yeah, in general. Yeah. What would you guys say? How to keep them together? Um, I don't know, you just have to inspire them. Mm -hmm. You have to have them working towards, uh, and like buy into the Pukulani Superette, like, like family. Mm -hmm. And once they're part of the family, you know, they, uh, they'll work for you and they'll work hard, so. Yeah. Um, and you gotta appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like Acknowledge what they do. Mm -hmm. no, nobody, is a, nobody is a slave driver. Mm -hmm. We understand that. And you can't do that. Yeah. And you know, see the last 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. labor laws. Labor laws. Labor laws. Oh, labor laws. Labor laws. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, government, federal mm -hmm. labor laws have become more defined. Mm -hmm. not, not as general as the, what it used to be. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's, an, uh, what's an example of a... Uh, for people listening, labor law. Labor laws. So, if we're not compliant uh -huh. to certain labor laws, uh -huh. an employee, uh -huh. and that is any employee for any business, yep. can complain to the U.S. government Department of Labor and Industrial Relations. That's uh -huh. federal. Yeah, federal. And they will investigate. Mm -hmm. you know, or like, you say, for example. Uh, hypothetically, if I required all of my employees to wear boot, lace-up shoes, mm -hmm. steel-toed with uh, flame orange <laughs> stuff <laughs> flame like that, <laughs> you know, I, I, I probably could. But mm -hmm. now if I said I want steel toes with a blade in it, uh, that'd, oh. be, that'd be wrong. Yeah. Oh, who knows? Yeah. Or if I made a, if I made um, a rule in my store that you must be able to lift 
150 pounds. 150 Five pounds. feet. Walk it. Put it on the wagon. Yeah. One time, not in pieces. Uh huh. That will be against labor laws. Oh wow. If, for example, if I required, uh, if I hired a high school student, uh huh, uh, and he had to be working, I made, I made him cross the threshold from the storefront. Mm hmm he's a bagger uh-huh. you know a grocery bagger uh and made him push a uh, wheel uh no wheel bear, push a wagon a cart mm-hmm. big cart of uh cargo from the store into the over the threshold into the warehouse i'd be non-compliant with rules already wow. hey, i didn't know that wow. we were doing this for so long and it's like hey wait a minute somebody said that you can't you can't do that i don't know somebody from Maui Soro or from another grocery store said, you mm. can't do that. Mm. So we checked it out and said, whoa, wow. we can't do that. So that meant we, we don't hire high school kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, not, not for any stocking and stuff, because they have to go from warehouse, right. bring the stuff out to the floor, yeah. and back. That's, that's, uh, that's a federal law. That's incredible. I think it's different, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, so if you see anybody doing that, you better tell them, hey, you know, that's, that's against federal law. <laughs> yeah. You really want to go to you really want to go to court? Oh. And you don't want to. Exactly. Because especially if that kid, uh, or say girl or boy, yeah, gets hurt mm-hmm. in the back, mm. in the warehouse. <coughs> what are you doing there? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just putting stuff away like I usually do. Yeah. You you doing what? Exactly. How old are you? Right, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. You can't. Oh. I don't know if it was over seven, was it below 18 or 18. was it over eight, uh, you have to be over 18 I'm uh-huh. not sure but we didn't even cross that threshold we didn't visit that yeah if anything just specifically only mm-hmm. to bag groceries or right. to do a certain thing on the sales floor uh-huh. you know we had different entrances from warehouse to store to warehouse yeah on this side at any time they're carrying anything into the store. Into the store. They've got to pass through the warehouse, right? Yeah. Uh, that's wrong. Wow. That's wrong. See, that's incredible. Whoa. Just thinking about all these different, you know, uh, rules and laws. And that must have changed over the years, too, I would imagine. Since uh, 40 years, 50 years. Well, I think that was one of the changes. Yeah. We, we didn't recognize at first. Uh, until it was brought to our attention. You know, yeah. A lot of things. You gotta be careful. I'm vigilant. You know, Damn. ADA rules. Yeah. You know about this. Oh my gosh. Right? You gotta be compliant. Oh, compliant, yeah. yeah. For example, the time stairs like that, if that's uh, where that person needs to be mm-hmm. because of a certain program, whatever you have, mm-hmm. and they're paying for it, mm-hmm. you better have an escalator that can bring them up, mm-hmm. or an elevator that can bring them up. Or an alternative mm-hmm. location downstairs. Yeah, or, mm-hmm. yeah, you gotta figure that out. Yeah. So, <laughs> much as provide an ADA parking stall. Right, the parking stall. Yes. <laughs> and that's for your business. You yeah. Know? Whether oh it's gosh. like in this uh, facility, maybe it's shared in, you know, like shopping centers, they have already zone stalls. You know, yes. So not too yeah, yeah, shopping centers. But yeah. we didn't know this it's incredible. until somebody said, you know, you better, you better put something up because yeah. uh, these people that maybe wheelchairs want to come in the store. Well, okay, if they come in the store with a wheelchair, can they yeah. fit through the aisles? Can they fit? Yeah, that's the question. Oh my and gosh. if another wagon passes by, what's you're going to have to back oh. up all the way. So you have all of these little issues. Oh. Right? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Man, this is great. I, we could talk for like two hours, three uh, hours, yeah. no problem. That's why I'm so glad <laughs> came a little early today. And, and so th- this is a little gift for you guys. Oh. This is our book called Fighting Sickness with Fitness. Thank and you. it really made me think about what you were saying about uh, the chef yeah. and the, the raw veganism. Because we're all about trying to overcome all the health conditions. Diabetes, type 2, mm-hmm. cholesterol, all the hypertension, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Through just lifestyle, exercise, eating healthy. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm just so excited. So, I mean, that's one of the big pushes we're going to do next year is we know our plate lunches, our bentos are a little bit unhealthy, and we want to just make tiny changes like brown rice instead of white rice, mm. or vegetables instead of mac salad, or something. Dang. Little tweaks yeah. to get, you know, 
the construction workers or like the workers. It's the new face coming up. Yeah. Megan. Right? <laughs> Just a little bit healthier. Dang. And later on, maybe what we'll do is we're going to be visiting the, uh, mm -hmm. didn't tell her this, but mm -hmm. if you want to go in that <laughs> direction, um, more healthy uh, lifestyle, mm -hmm. this is a lifestyle, right? Yes. A change in lifestyle. And you need certain kind of prompts to me. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to quit smoking, well, you mm -hmm. need certain kind of prompts like a, you know the the picture of the the damaged lung. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'll get oh you. Like, that'll get your attention. I mean, really, for sure. But for like diabetes, there's many examples. But all you gotta do is go to the dialysis center over here. Mm. Sit on the bench or bring a now you can't sit down, but now you get bring a little beach chair, mm -hmm. whatever. Sit over there and just watch the cars that roll up. Mm. Or the vans, or the handy vans, or the, the MEO buses come up like that and see who comes out and what kind of condition are they in. You're going to see wheelchairs. <coughs> You're going to see people with crutches. Mm. And my friend, uh, Max Coleman, who's since passed away, mm -hmm. good guy, uh, in PD. Yeah? Uh, he passed away, but the thing is, I used to pick him up, pick him up for dialysis. Mm to go play poker night. Poker night. And be on a Friday. That's what happens to be the, his schedule, his dialysis schedule. Wow. So I pick him up from there and then he went blind a couple times. Oh. Yeah, I mean, he can go blind and come back. Yeah, the sugar. Yeah. But while I'm sitting there, getting back to that, while I'm sitting there, you're watching these people get off. They don't have their leg. Mm. Some of them don't have two legs. But they have to go. They gotta go. Some people don't have feet. Some of them you see in cast, why? Because they just cut off their last three toes. Mm. You know, like that. And a lot of them, you know, you see they're coming inside, they're walking slowly with not, no crutches, not on a wheelchair, they're walking, but their feet have the black socks. Yes. Right? Yes. And the circulation is starting to terminate. Mm -hmm. And they're very dangerous, that's very dangerous for getting gangrene. Yeah. Because they probably can't feel their feet already. No. You, you get to the point feeling, right? yep. the neuropathy, right? Mm -hmm. so um, it's not feeling. only pain, but it's numbness. Yes. Numb. And the thing is, when it gets that bad and you stub your toenail, the toenail comes off, you're not going to know. Mm -hmm. You know, for like a couple of days, maybe, yeah. you know, oh, infected, yeah. and as it gets infected and what oh, sits in a place man. that doesn't have any circulation, gangrene. And that's when they start chopping. Mm -hmm. Now that's the reality of diabetes. Yes. Just go to the dialysis center, ask permission to, you can just loiter outside. <laughs> and but if you watch, it becomes pretty clear, like what, I have diabetes, what I was heading for. Mm. What my friend Max was already in, mm. in condition. Mm -hmm. And what all these people are going in their life. Yes. You know, they have a crash room in, in the dialysis center, I believe was in case the heart stops. Uh -huh. In case the heart stops. Yeah, they have an emergency crash room inside with a doctor. Because in case it stops, you got you got you don't got minutes. You got maybe seconds. Seconds, oh. right? Till you go brain dead. Yeah. Would you want that? You know. So anyway, mm. yeah, I think you're doing a good job. Mm. What Just do you guys think it. comes to mind? And thank you for that. What do you guys think comes to mind? The first thing when you guys read this title, "Fighting Sickness with Fitness." What do you guys? What comes to mind when you hear that? Remember we were just talking about the food and all of this. We just love asking, closing this off. Mm, I know. Yeah. I know. With I know. <laughs> do it when you can. Do it now. Mm. Do Start it when you can. Today. Do it now. Don't, Start today. Don't hesitate. You got the inkling <coughs> to do it. You should contact Justin right away <laughs> and start. At least start here. You yeah. might have your own kind of program, but at least start here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's clear that this is his. This is his business, and this is what he does. Yes. He's like your personal trainer, mm -hmm. and it's right. He's right in front of you, like he's sitting right in front of me. <laughs> like you should think about this. With, if not, you know, if not, when it's not, when but. It's not if, but when are you going to mm. do this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to run marathons. And mm. so, um, what I, one, I hate running. I will always hate running, mm -hmm. but I like it mm -hmm. in the same sense. I get to talk and run at the same time with someone is awesome. Um, but, you know, I couldn't run a mile to begin with, but you got to start somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And I did like, how many? Like eight 
I, I hey. stopped. I got wow. injured and I stopped, but yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, you start with a mile. You can walk. Yeah. You've got to start somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us, and what a what a honor! And uh, thank you guys for driving all the way here, and oh, you know you. making time in your guys' schedules. And and if you guys like this episode, please like, comment, subscribe, and let us know, man. I know we get some comments. Uh, we could talk for hours. <laughs> this chemistry is good right here. So if you guys want to see him back on? Uh, let us know, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank well, you guys. And also check out their crew, Dodi and Serene. Oh, Serena. they're pretty crew <laughs> behind the scenes. Dodie, right? Dodie and Serene. Yeah. yeah right on, Justin. Yeah. Thank you guys for making this happen. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.